This is an indefinite potential, but I don't want you to think that the circled green area is a limit or boundary, so that anything over here is something else or nothing. So let this also equal an indefinite potential, which is the same as saying that both are the potential. Here's the indefinite potential again. It's the nature for itself, and it has an absolute relationship to itself. This absolute relationship is what produces or supports interaction. Under these conditions, or at this state of potential, the interaction is the potential's distinction of itself. The distinction being made is the potential's absolute relationship to itself. This allows us to represent the relationship in terms of symmetry when we need to. Simply put, the potential indefinitely identifies that it is the nature for itself. If we wanted to describe its process in terms of an action it has to perform, then we must say that this action can never not happen, or never not be happening, so that we understand this action to always be the case, which is the equivalent of always happening. The information of an indefinite potential treats an existence as the state of operation for distinctions. We can describe the position for itself as an indefinite symmetry. Its absolute relationship is what ultimately breaks the symmetry, so to speak. But since its absolute relationship is its only actual condition, I would suggest its symmetry is already broken. It does this naturally because its relationship is the identity of itself. It does this absolutely because there is no other choice. Its relationship is the nature for itself. In basic terms, this means the potential can be distinguished. And in detailed review, we know a distinction is the result of an interaction of it. If you want, we can say all distinctions break the symmetry by identifying the potential. At the heart of an existence is an absolute relationship. Information in terms of the potential is the distinction of itself. The interaction for this distinction is a stabilized state of its operation. If we were to think of it as having a direction, then one direction would be toward the absolute of itself, and the other direction would be the expressive state of it. We say expressive because all distinctions are of the potential state. So yes, all identification is actually its own information. To help clarify an order of things, we apply the term quantify. The operation of a distinction is to quantify. We say interactions of the potential quantify in terms of an expressive state. It doesn't have to be the case where there is a whole bunch of data about possible things just infinitely waiting around. One way to think of it is the distinction made acts or behaves in addition to the potential, or the distinction acts on its own behalf. In fact, we understand that before anything can act on behalf of anything else, it must first act on behalf of itself. The minimum behalf that needs to be acted upon is the distinction between whatever it is and the potential. Therefore, the quantum describes the stabilization of the distinction. This is another reason why we can also represent it positionally. Usually we describe it as the frames of reference for the observer. All identity will always define the relationships that make it possible. Interaction can be thought of as a quantifying agent that stabilizes relationships to the potential, so that there is a distinguished state of operation. Information for the state of operation will support an identity and system. The identity and system is an expressed state of the potential. This is the same as saying it is in a position of existence, which is the equivalent of the identity and its system operating on its behalf.